Hey guys, how's it going? As you can see, there's no face cam here. This isn't going to be a typical gameplay episode. Today, I f figured I'd share a story with you. Hopefully, this isn't as boring as I expect it to be, but I'll let you guys be the judge. And let me know in the comments if you what you thought and uh, all that good stuff. <laughs> Um, so this story happened when I was really young, I want to say like five or six, and I lived in this small community that you're going to think I'm making this up, but I, I am not joking. It, we lived in a small neighborhood that does not exist anymore. It got wiped off the map. Anyway, this is basically the story of how I got my scars and why I just randomly decided to try a Joker impersonation. I don't know. Anyway, as you probably haven't noticed, because I don't really like point it out blatantly up until now, um, I do have a bit of a scar on my upper lip. And this is the story of not just how I got my scar, but what happened afterwards, I guess. So this happened when I was about, uh, I want to say five or six. I was, I was pretty young when it happened. Uh, my dad was at work and my mom and my next door neighbor were sitting on the back porch having some kind of co conversation. Now I was in the front yard playing, I don't know what, some, just kids games, you know. You're that young, you, you run around and play. Doesn't matter what, you, your, your imagination will do everything for you. Anyway, so in the middle of that, I start hearing our neighbor's dog, Pepper, whimpering. Yeah, I still remember the dog's name. How original. A, dumb, a Dalmatian named Pepper. Anyway, so the, the dog starts whimpering. And at the time, I'm just this little kind-hearted soul and thought to myself, Oh, that poor dog. He needs attention. So I go around the back of the house to the backyard and approach the dog who is on the other side of this fence and it's it's a field fence so it's it's basically it's basically wire woven into about six or eight inch squares it's big enough for the dog's head to get through right anyway so as I approach the dog he just changes his whimpering to growling and I'm like um okay I'll back off, whatever. So I go back to the front yard and continue playing. Well, a few moments later, the dog starts whimpering again, and I go back out to the backyard to check on him, because kids don't think so good on possibility of danger, I guess. So anyway, I'm heading back to the backyard to check on the dog, and he's whimpering some more, and so in a it's all right, I'm here for you, kind of gesture. I go up to him and pat him on the head. Well, then suddenly he just lets a quick growl out and lunges at me. And he's heading straight for my face. Now, I noticed this, and somehow, five or six-year-old me has lightning quick reflexes, and I just jump back, and I mean... I literally, like, action man kind of pretending I'm getting thrown back by an explosion kind of a jump. So, dog lunges, I jump back, land on butt, and that freaks my mom and my neighbor out so hard. And I kind of let out a chuckle, like, oh, he almost got me. It's like, why does my lip feel funny? So I put my hand on my lip. And pull back. Hand is covered in blood. 
He got me. He would have got me a lot worse had I not pulled the action man stunt, but he got me. And my lip was torn from almost the center to the complete other edge. So the skin of my lip was almost completely gone. It was just dangling there. Well, no, I actually got tucked inside, but it was hanging by a thread. So mom's freaking out, neighbor's freaking out, She's yelling and screaming. It's like, why did your son do that? It's like, and my mom's like, he didn't do Jack. The dog attacked him. And I'm just sitting here. And we've been, I've been moved to the kitchen where mom is trying to get the bleeding to stop. It starts prepping a cold compress or whatever. And I'm just sitting here like, Come on, it's just a little blood. What's what's the big deal? And uh, the more my neighbor starts panicking, the more I think to myself, hey, these ad these adults aren't taking it so well. Should should I be worried? Am I going to bleed to death? And eventually that thought goes away because my mom quickly stopped that thought. It's like she's like, no, you won't bleed to death. It's not that bad. Now, take this, putting a ice pack wrapped in a uh, washcloth into my hand. Press this onto your, onto your mouth and just go watch cartoons. So that's what I did. I actually sat down and watched an old Dick Tracy cartoon that was put on the TV for me. Yeah, they had those. <laughs> I grew up with a lot of old cartoons and, and TV shows. I'm sitting there watching the cartoon, and before I know it, the paramedics have arrived. They come in, take a look at me, and uh, and say, yeah, we got to take you to the emergency room, get your lip put back on. So they got me in the ambulance and took me to the hospital, and I was in there for... I don't remember how long, but I remember my mom was there. My dad came in from work. My grandma had shown up for some reason. And then walks in this guy who I mis I initially mistook for my uncle, but apparently he was the doctor. And to paint this picture for you, why I, I didn't think he was the doctor at all. Guy walks in wearing cowboy boots, 10-gallon hat, and a handlebar mustache. Like, when you're six years old, you do not picture a doctor looking like that. But anyway, he apparently got away with that because he was such a good doctor. <laughs> but I, I say that sarcastically, but I can't... I can't say otherwise because he stitched my lip up while I was fully conscious and kept me calm the whole time while the needle and silk were going through repeatedly to put my lip back together. And the scar would have been a lot worse than it is if he hadn't been so good at it. Anyway... A couple days afterwards, I'm back home. My lip is still feeling funny, and I notice there's not a whole lot going on at our neighbor's house. Well, it turns out that while I was sitting there, zoned into the TV, watching the cartoons, the, the EMT guys were having a very, I guess, heated discussion with the neighbor telling her that she needed to put down her dog because it attacked a child, child being me. And so instead of that, they just moved. They literally just picked up everything they could and moved out in the middle of the night. So literally they just up and 
vanished like a puff of smoke, which didn't bother me at all because her two teenage sons were complete dick hats to me. As far as the dog goes, I don't really hold a grudge. Never have. And I don't have any, like, I don't have any, like, trauma from it or anything like that. It, dogs don't bother me at all. Even the ones you claim are vicious, and I'm doing air quotes here, because I see all this crap on online about, for example, pit bulls. People don't like pit bulls. I can't understand why. I've met so many pit bulls, and this sounds weird, but I've met so many pit bulls that are just the sweetest animals or the biggest babies you'll ever meet as far as dogs go. So I don't get it. It just depends on the owner and how well they treated the dog or how big of a dick they were to it. That's pretty much it as far as the story goes. I hope it wasn't too boring and uh, I'd like to hear some input from you. I Do you guys have any similar stories like or thoughts on my story? Let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to share different stories with you if you feel like this is something you'd like me to try again. I'll see you in the next episode, and hopefully it'll amaze. Later. Water? What the? Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa!